Hello everybody, welcome to my latest video. Thank you for tuning in. Today I will be talking about decolonizing and how that looks like according to me, Frey, a history enthusiast and of Nahuatl descent. So I have came up with uh, the three phases and how decolonizing looks like and what are the steps that you can take. So hopefully you can find this useful. This video could be compatible with anybody from the indigenous peoples of the Americas, but here I will be talking about myself. I will be mentioned. I will be using myself as an example, and I will also be talking uh, to the indigenous Mexican community. But again, if you find this useful, no matter where you are, more power to you. And let's get started. So the three phases that are in question about decolonizing is healing, reconnecting, and of course revolution. Now these don't have to be in the exact order. You could start off with whichever one you want. Me personally, as an example, I started off with revolution, uh, just given my background, I have a little bit of uh, experience with activism. So I definitely started that off first with an identity crisis. And afterwards I began to reconnect and then now I am in the healing phase. So whichever phase you want to go with, go ahead and do so. But firstly, decoloniz decolonization, uh, what it means to me is just this, it's a really essential aspect of our community and our psychology for knowing which and what direction we want to invest our energy to uh, in the hopes of dismantling colonization. That way we can have a great impact in that field. At the same time, I love having these kinds of discussions with people. You may find me in a live talking about decolonizing or people coming up questions on how that looks like. I love having these kinds of conversations because this will just create brilliant and powerful minds. Definitely, it's something good. It's definitely a constructive conversation and it's really stimulating for me. And to be honest, I will also talk about some fields like genealogy or history. And I will give my two cents on that thing. But at the same time, I'm not going to completely talk about those fields uh, in debt because of my lack of experience and also my lack of credentials because I am a history enthusiast. I no way or form of a professional. I do not hold a PhD or a degree in those certain subjects. So hitting the ground running, I want to go ahead and bust the gates and talk about the first phase, which is healing. How that looks like. Healing is focusing on the major issues in our psychology that has been left and ravaged by colonization, such as intergenerational trauma, toxic behaviors, anti-blackness, which is one of the big ones, identity crises, another one of the big ones, self-validation, etc., etc. Seeking professional help with various forms of therapy will definitely help you combat these issues. Me, myself, I will use myself as an example. I am going through cognitive behavioral therapy and I will later be advancing to other forms of therapy. I would definitely recommend speaking to a therapist or a psychologist to definitely combat these issues since that is, they'll give you resources and different methods on how to address these issues. My therapist says that addressing the core and addressing these issues will definitely create those neural pathways in your brain to help rewire your brain so that way you can process and just benefit from those types of methods. In other words, it'll just better yourself and think differently and think better in a healthier way, that is, because I know for a fact um, in my family and this, this kind of pattern within my family is kind of prominent within the Mexican community where our parents don't validate our feelings. They don't validate our disorders. They don't validate depression, or anxiety, or I suffered a lot of trauma and abuse as a kid. So definitely right off the bat, um, when I moved out and I had medical insurance, um, I was really lacking uh, the initiative to go on and, you know, take uh, therapy and now as an adult, I, when I got the chance, now I do. And I'm taking advantage of those things to help me better as a person. And I would say it has, it has definitely helped me a lot by addressing that trauma, by addressing those issues. And definitely it's making me a better person. Another aspect of healing that I also want to talk about is validation. When being affected from colonization, um, a symptom of colonization is definitely identity crises and how that looks like is 
someone who doesn't know who they are, someone who is seeking and craving validation from others, when my advice to them is that you do not need validation from nobody. The only validation that you need is from yourself. If you can prove to yourself that you have indigenous ancestry, then you are indigenous. Even though if you're mixed or if you're a quarter or an eighth or even a sixteenth, you have indigenous ancestry. So with that being said, more power to you and myself, more power to you. And uh, I just want to know that you are loved. And, uh, and just a reminder that having an identity crisis will definitely make you prone to some um, fake shamanism or fake new age, you know, type of uh, narrative where it can be toxic in some cases and some cases rarely it can be pretty dangerous where you have people creating cults and one perfect and dangerous example of that is the Owen Thomas Phillips thing that I covered a while ago. But let's keep going. Moving on to the other phase of decolonization is reconnecting. Now, reconnecting for me is definitely one of the most difficult phases of all. Reason behind that is because of how much research you need to invest. And at the same time, how many difficulties you're going to experience along that journey. The process of reconnecting will look like going down your genealogy and investigating your indigenous ancestors and figuring out what nation they came from. Unfortunately, since I mentioned genealogy, I will not be talking about that in this video simply because of my lack of experience in that field. Perhaps if you guys want me to create a video where I discuss and share my experience on my genealogy journey, I would more than happy to do so. Just let me know down there in the comments so that way uh, that'll let me know and it'll motivate me to push out a video like that in the future. Another aspect of reconnecting could definitely be reconnecting with history. History could also be a crucial aspect of your identity when it comes to decolonization. That way you get a sense of how your people were in history. Also, that will contribute uh, to how you will understand yourself more. Me as an example, again, um, I found uh, as a person in high school, I never had interest in things, but the but there were a few things that really did catch my interest, and that was art and writing. I loved to free write, and I was a sucker for poetry as well. So when I found out that the Tlaxcaltecas were definitely great poets and they had great art, that really aligns with my character. Maybe people might be different, but that's just my experience. It might be a little bit different for you, but who knows? It helped me understand how I am as a person. So, yeah, moving on. Knowing that you're indigenous and reconnecting, going through the reconnecting process will kind of give you a sense that you are a part of a community. Because of your indigenous ancestry, you have links to different nations. Of course, it's always a must to go ahead and reconnect with your fellow folks from your nation. But also at the same time, I will say this, at the same time, we must be culturally mindful of things called close practices and cultural boundaries that you must respect. As an example, right? Me as an indigenous Mexican from Centro Mexico, I cannot speak about something of the medicine wheel or talking about a ghost dance or talking about the sun dance and explaining to a non-native or another native and speaking about different kinds of issues. Well, that might be acceptable, but I cannot be speaking about their history and their close practices and their sacred knowledge. I cannot be speaking about that. And if somebody catches me, that will seem as pretty disrespectful and also, there is a demographic out there that will definitely take it a step further where I seen some indigenous Mexicans saying Aho or they'll be you'll see them probably wearing a Lakota uh, or Sioux Plains Indian war bonnet. So that's definitely a no no. And if you want to be, you know, uh, hard headed and you want to say that, oh, but I'm indigenous, I could wear that. Okay, then I recommend you going to a powwow with that and on a Sioux reservation and keep that same energy. I highly recommend it. Just because you are indigenous does not mean that you have the right to everything. 
I know that there is a demographic out there that just because they find out they're indigenous, they would want to claim anything that is indigenous related. And that's a form of uh, toxic behavior and that goes to um, the identity crisis. Also, another warning is that from a history enthusiast that uh, I do not recommend subscribing to a romanticized version of history simply because of um, it's kind of a form of erasure of the truth. And it, to me, personally, this is my personal opinion, if someone subscribes to a romanticized version of history, it kind of makes me seem like that that person actually cares what a colonizer thinks. And the way how I see that is because you are manipulating history in order to please one's view on your people. Just a little food for thought. So with that being said, you must come with peace with the truth and be aware that history all over the world even is not, it could get pretty ugly and it could get really gruesome. So we must come to peace with that fact that you will find acts of human sacrifice and even cannibalism all around the world. And you will see people even to this day, you know, doing those practices. No one is safe from that. There was acts of that all over the world, including the white men. And when you are calling out the colonizer and you are telling them, oh, okay, so what if, if, if it were warring with each other? You guys have also been warring with each other and committing atrocities to other demographics simply because of the color of their skin or because of their religion. Also, there is uh, mentions of all over Europe about cannibalism and incest and human sacrifices. And even every Sunday we go to church. No, not me. They go to church and they say, here is the blood of Christ and here is a piece of flesh of Jesus Christ, you know. How is that not a form of cannibalism? Sure, it might not be actual cannibalism, but it's still a concept of that. So when you call them out, trust me, I do that sometimes in the comment section on some of my social media platforms. And the way how they react is just funny and it's definitely a sight to see. But moving on with the next phase. The final phase I will be talking about is revolution. In this context, I am not going to be using the definition of forcibly overthrowing the government, but more of a definition of a drastic and wide-reaching change. What I mean by that, and what that means to me, is that an active revolution could be something simple, like teaching an indigenous village slash pueblo community, and in Mexico, so to speak, a sophisticated method of self-sustainability in the fields of agriculture, water, clothes, housing, power, education, etc., etc. So that way, they will need to cling on to the dependency of a higher entity. For example, when a foreign miner company moves down into the indigenous uh, regions of Mexico and they are just contaminating the resources and they're just obliterating you know, these natural things, at the same time, some of them will destroy, you know, some ancient uh, archaeology. And some of our people, yes, I do. I, I see that they, that they are struggling and that they need to take those jobs because of survival, just to feed their families. But when you influence them in a way, I believe that if you influence them with self-sustainability and they could sustain themselves without a higher entity such as those mining companies, then that's where the revolution begins. And I feel like we should advocate more on this kind of aspect. And I will give a shout out to those of you who are definitely out there providing Wi-Fi and providing these kinds of uh, essential needs to those indigenous people in Mexico and other places as well. I, I praise you and I will say a prayer out for you guys as well. Another another aspect of revolution could definitely be just organizing within your community, coming together and having these conversations with people and decolonizing and in and, and the various phases as well. Implementing that seed in their minds and going to schools and public speaking and getting these kids children's attention because when you teach them when they're young, they'll definitely grow up and they grow older and they'll be like, wow, I remember that funny looking dude Alfredo talking about decolonization and I love myself you know that's how they'll bloom and they'll blossom 
in the future because that's what happened to me. Also, uh, uh, creating alliances with our with our northern relatives. It's great to know who they are and how they were. At the same time, keeping those cultural boundaries like I talked about earlier. Just by getting to know them and having to show our support whenever they call for, whenever they give the call for help, we will be there. You know, that will definitely give us a healthier relationship and giving that mutual respect is just uh, amazing for both communities. You know, let's reciprocate that. But not also, not only just our northern relatives, but also the African diaspora showing our support, calling out people with anti-black rhetoric and also donating and doing things and going out there and giving back to the community as well. It's definitely, you know, will definitely help benefit our friendship. So yeah, basically I have talked about all the phases and all the points that I wanted to bring up in this conversation. Hopefully these things have helped, will help you in your decolonizing journey. And yeah, that, that's it for today. Thank you very much. And I hope everything is going your way. And also I want to say that you mattered and that you are loved. Thank you very much and have a great day.